Okay, good morning. We're gonna, I'm going to tell you a little bit about queen excluders and how to look after them. Uh, queen excluder is this grid, uh, or sometimes called a screen. The bars in this are very carefully spaced so that the worker bees have enough, uh, because they're slightly smaller, can pass through the spacing, but the uh, drones and the queens cannot. So this is like the old Abbott and Costello uh, movie where uh, I think it's uh, Abbott can get through the cell bars, but Costello cannot. So we're trying to, and the idea is that the queen will be kept below in the hive where she's safe and won't get mixed up with any of the stuff going on with the honey production. And it also keeps her brood, all the young bees, uh, out of the honey area so that uh, that doesn't contaminate either the honey or the flavor. Problem with these things is they're really delicate uh, and even a small, because that spacing is so fine, uh, it's easy to end up with a problem. And so you have to kind of check them by looking along the lines of the, and make sure everything is straight, both that way and then also this way. And aha, look, there's a, see that error in the spacing there? that would lead to possibly, especially that spot right there, a queen getting through. And for years, I've been, when I notice those excluders that are damaged, I've been accumulating them. I haven't been throwing them out, but I haven't been doing them. So look, I got quite a pile of excluders here. Uh, and to try to prevent them from getting damaged, I have these, I built these bins, which holds four piles of 25 excluders. Uh, and by keeping them inside a bin, I think they take less damage in handling. But either that's maybe a hive tool that slipped when, when the hive was being worked, or maybe it was when it was being stacked. But we got to fix those. And uh, so I've been making little, and this is a bit of an experiment, I haven't done this before, but uh, I'm going to take a little clip. and insert it where that damaged spot is. And I've bent that on a vise, and then I'm just gonna hammer it over. Both ways like that. And now I think that excluder is usable again. Some of my excluders are pretty old. These wooden ones here, uh, these metal ones, some, there's two different kinds, or the ones with the wooden edging. Some of them are bonded, and I don't know if that's maybe solder, and if it's lead, or if it's steel, but they should probably be taken out of circulation permanently. And then some of these are really ancient. There isn't any welding in the manufacture. It's little, uh, uh, holes drilled in the wood and, and then the top side is broken off of this. So these were assembled probably by hand. Well, I, if that's not a hundred years old, I'd be surprised. So uh, it's probably fully depreciated and I can probably spare the few of those that I have thrown away. So we'll just keep working away at that. Uh, here's a couple more that I've done. This is my initial, and you can see that really in terms of the total surface area, the repair is not going to interfere that much with the efficiency of the excluder. There's another, even though this one's been repaired, there's actually another gap there. So <laughs> there's no guarantee that there's only one problem. So we're just going to put another patch in that one right now. Pretty important that you don't get too crazy with the hammer here because you can actually cause even more problems. And you also don't want any edges of that metal sticking up in a way that would uh, hurt someone if they were handling the excluder. So I think uh, that's a good project for a winter day. It's about minus 30 outside, so the last thing we want to do is uh, 
think about uh, the bees being out there, but uh, we'll, we can work inside in the shop where it's warm and get ready for spring. Have a great day, everyone.